what the format is with this interview? It's not Q&A, is it? It is. Oh, shit. Alicia? What do you got against Q&A? Can you make some more coffee? Oh, no, I had to do one the other day, and I was a little sloppy for it. I saw this guy going, just realizing he would have to make me sound for him. <laughs> How'd you get that away from me? Get out of here. That's my mopping my brow material. What the hell? You! These are Italian trousers! <sighs> here, Zachary, can you take this dog away? I, I realize it's impossible to have any sympathy, I mean, true sympathy for people that are famous. People usually go through a bad period when they first get mm. successful. You're new when you're hot. Mm. Things go wrong. So you're not really used to all the attention. People treat you differently. And, and what happens is you start taking that seriously, and then you start becoming an ass, and then they treat you like an ass. And then Was there a period like that for you, where you uh, things were a little out of control? Right now. One of my favorite things used to be in traffic in New York, and there's a Cadillac honking or something, and the state is honking. I used to do this all the time before I was famous. I would jump into the middle of the street and say, excuse me, there's a Mercedes that's got to get through here. You know, and I would push people out of the way and get out of the way, you know, let him through, you know, smacking their cars and stuff, just like whack, you know, you just jump into it, you know, and you can't do it because now you do it and you go, hey, Lord, hey, meatballs. The whole thing is lost. The point you were trying to make or whatever fun you were trying to have is sort of undercut. The money thing is, you know, the sort of Elvis Presley thing of buying your mother a car is great. My mother has learned how to spend money. I mean, she used to call and say, you know, we really need a boiler. You know, and I just, just for the hell of it, I would say, well, why don't you shop around and see which one, you know, don't blow a lot of money. I mean, just get a bargain. You know, I got a boiler in the house to keep the house in the winter in Chicago. So finally I bought her an American Express card. And the, the numbers she puts up are geometric. Every year. I mean, the first year, I think she bought a tow when a car broke down. The second year, she uh, went to dinner on her birthday or something. The third year, she rented a condo in Florida for the winter <laughs> and took her, you know, a couple of cousins and some friends down. So, I mean, she's figured it wow. out. Wow. I mean, you know, she had nine kids. Technically, she could commit murder and get away with it. So, whatever number she runs up on me is, you know, not even a misdemeanor. I know it could have been anybody. It's just a weird, lucky thing, really. It could have been any actor. There are a lot of actors who are more talented than me at Second City who quit it before they even got to a paying status. You know? well, in life. Weird luck. I had no other option. <laughs> you know, I'm still just like a punk kid, really. You know, I'm just an obnoxious guy who can make it appear charming. That's how, what they pay me to do. I'd sort of gone through some sort of spiritual change in the late 70s where I sort of saw there was some other life to live. It changed the way that I worked, just having a different presence and a different attention. That's the reason I'm not the one that's dead. Because the attraction of the uh, fast life is very powerful. Even today, I could go at any time. Something wild can happen to anybody. And I caution anybody that walks out on the street, it's settle your accounts before you leave the house every day. The only good thing about fame that I've gotten is I've gone on a couple of speeding tickets. I've gotten into a restaurant when I didn't have a suit and tie on. That's really about it. And you can talk to girls more easily. They will talk to you. You don't necessarily do any better with them. But they will talk to you. It's almost like being in the, in the ladies' room sometimes because they feel comfortable with you and they will say a lot of things they wouldn't talk to anybody they would think of as a potential suitor. They think of you as like some freak. You may as well have a, an elephant on a rope, you know, for, for the way they deal with you. This episode is sponsored by Dropbox. Whether you're designing, presenting, writing, or building, Dropbox makes it simple to work together on any file. Because if you can work with anyone, anywhere, any way you want, the world will be full of more interesting things. Dropbox, all yours. Now, back to the interview. I act like a jerk sometimes, and that's sort of what the product is. You know, you get these people who act like, you know, what the hell? 
when you act obnoxious towards people like on a movie set, they say, oh, we're ready for you. I say, oh, go to hell. I'm, my feet hurt and my head aches. And, you know, you want to have a margarita for lunch, you know? And people, you know, like these little ADs and production assistants, like, well, he's drinking again. You're like, drinking again? Go to hell. All I ever did was make some movies that made a lot of money. Now, leave me alone. I want to have some fun, you know? You know, on Ghostbusters, they had somebody hot following us, following us. You'd walk down the street, you turn around and somebody would duck into a doorway. You know, just to control us, to make sure we didn't do anything too weird. You know, it's like, what the hell? I didn't get in this position by being like a stiff sitting on the set in a folding chair. You know, I did it by walking around on the streets and stirring things up. 